Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. Last time we put together a program that we could issue commands to and it would respond, but now we're going to build the actual robotic part that can act on those commands and be our assistant. That should look a little something like this. Pass me the wire cutters. Put the wire cutters away. Bring me the wire strippers. The tools are all going to be raised and lowered by four motors. I got all these motors and accessories from Servo City, and look at this, they even sent me some candy. I'm obviously not sponsored by them, but if you know anyone who works at Servo City, I love their motors. So I'll just put the collar onto the motor. Tighten that, and that is not going anywhere. So now we can attach this brace to the frame. Now our motor is nice and secure in this brace, in this frame. So for some reason it took two years of engineering school before I actually figured out how you get stuff onto a shaft. And let's take a look at how that actually happens. Um, there's a number of different shaft designs and one of them is this D shaft. You see how if I turn it like this, it looks like a capital letter D. And because I'm filming, it might be backwards, but you see one side is flat. Anyway, you see that little nub? That is a screw that we can actually screw in and out. And that's going to be applied to the flat side of that shaft and we'll screw it in tight so that it's secure. And what will we be attaching it to? That'll be these spools. We want these spools to rotate when the motors rotate. The only trouble is they fit as awkwardly as possible. The diameter of the hole of the spool fits like halfway through the screw holes on the universal mounting hub. So I think what we're gonna have to do here is cut a circle the same radius as this outer radius out of a thin sheet of wood. We can mount this onto that piece of wood. I think that's our best solution. Whatever, right? Great, so now we have that particle board attached to the spools. Then we'll do a little geometry to find the center of our circle. All right, so now that universal mounting hub is firmly affixed to our spool. There's a flat part of the shaft. You can see it's got a bit of a machined finish. I'll just make sure that's lined up with the screw. And then tighten that screw with this Allen key. And now that's in place. You can hear when I rotate the spool, it's actually rotating the motor. It'll be easier for us to attach wires onto header pins, so I'm gonna solder some of those onto this motor. So we're gonna go ahead and make four of those. And now that we have all these motor spool modules put together, we can move on to the next step. So I'm thinking we can use the same particle board that we used to cut out those circles as kind of our frame. So one side of the spool is just rotating around the motor. We want the other side to also rotate freely, so we're gonna have these bearings. Now I'm gonna embed these into this piece of wood and hopefully it works out. Good. 
So here we're using a two-part epoxy. So the trick here is going to be to apply the epoxy just to the outside of the bearing without locking it up at all. Hope that works out. So we're just mixing the two parts of the epoxy here. Now we can go ahead and add those pine supports onto our particle board. And that piece on the right of the screen is the one that has the bearings embedded into it on the other side. Now that that's dry, we can think about how we're going to affix the spool to the bearing. So what I'm thinking is, this 5H dowel fits perfectly into the spool. This quarter inch screw fits nicely into the bearing, so we just need to combine those two. So we can cut off a small piece of the dowel, drill a hole in it, put the, rod, uh, put the screw through, pop that into here, We'll glue that in place and then that'll sit in the bearing. So now we have all these motors, but how are we going to control them? We're going to control them using a motor controller. So I ordered all the parts to make my own H-Bridge motor controller. They haven't arrived yet. If they arrive soon, I'll put that in this video. Otherwise, I'll just make it a different video. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be using this L298N motor controller. It's an H-Bridge motor controller as well. It might even be a dual H-Bridge. And it works as follows. We're going to input the 12 volts into this block here, and then optionally 5 volts. We're not going to do that. And then we have these two blocks, which are each going to take in the two leads of two motors. Then we're going to control the behavior using these four pins up front. Two pins control one motor. If one of the pins is high and the other pin is low, the motor will rotate one way. If it's the other way around, it'll rotate the other way. If they're both off, it'll stop. If they're both on, I think you short it. Um, I've read in some documentation that that'll lock it up. Um, it'll like break the motor with B-R-A-K-E. Oh, huh. It'll either break it or break it. That's funny. So in a standard H bridge, if you were to turn on all the transistors, you would in fact short the circuit and break it. I don't know if there's protections for that or something. I'm just not going to mess with it. Hopefully we don't need to B-R-A-K-E. B-R-A-K-E. The motor. Like just stopping it should be enough. Oh, this is a disaster, huh? I've wired this bad boy up to our Raspberry Pi. I've attached a Tamiya connector into the input for the battery, connected the grounds, and now we have two output leads that are going to go onto our motor, which we soldered those I.O. pins onto earlier. Beautiful! Now we should be able to control the behavior of this motor with our Raspberry Pi. Let's look at the code. Alright, great. So before in our code when we recognized that there was a tool and a bring word or a return word, we would just say, okay, great, we're putting the tool away. Now we're going to actually call a subprocess. We're going to run this Jarvis bot program with the word raise, if we're going to raise it, and then whatever tool it is. So let's look what that is. Jarvis bot is over here, and we're going to be using the RPI GPIO so that we can interact with the input output pins. We're going to basically be using these functions, the lower tool and the raise tool. And all that that's going to contain is a print statement saying we're lowering or raising the tool and then it's going to start rotating the tool. So that means is we're going to take the motor that corresponds to the tool. So for example, if the tool were screwdriver, that would be motor one. And we're going to set it to forward. And we're going to do that for whatever the spool time is. So here, five seconds. And then we're going to stop. Raise is going to be the opposite. We're just going to rotate in the opposite direction. And that's all there is to it. Here's all the code that sets that up. I will try to remember to post that on GitHub and put it in the description. And here's where we actually call that function. So we're going to raise and lower the tool for each tool that is mentioned in the previous program. So now we have power to our Raspberry Pi and a battery powering our motor and our motor controller. And eventually we'll try and get that all in the same system. And now I'm going to tell the driver's program to lower the screwdriver. I want to hit enter. the spool and spools for five seconds. And now when I say raise screwdriver, rotates the other way for the same amount of time. I'm just cutting some cord down the length and then uh, melting the frayed edges so that they don't come undone. And also my girlfriend curled my hair, but I'm gonna continue with the build video anyway. 
I'm gonna attach the cord onto the spool with some glue. Now I'm gonna try winding it automatically. I don't know if this will work, but let's give it a shot. All right, let's try that again. cut out some clear plastic here so we can make a second layer on top of our motors which I think will help us deal with our wire salad. So if I place this on top here now we have a surface where we can mount for example the motor drivers, maybe we can get the Raspberry Pi over here, then we got room for the battery right here. I think this might be a workable solution. So after tying some wires together and folding them, we have something here that I'm ready to call forgivable. So like we talked about earlier, the Raspberry Pi runs on 5 volts, but the battery is a 12 volt battery. So we are going to use a BEC, battery elimination circuit, to convert 12 volts to 5 volts. In order to do that, I need to solder on some new ends onto these wires. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Put some heat shrink tubing over that and we're good to go. We'll just go ahead and screw that into place. Alright. Alright, so I've set the Raspberry Pi to run the JavaScript at startup. We have a speaker here that goes into the uh, audio jack. And then here I've got a microphone that goes into the USB port. So now as soon as we connect the battery to the system here, it should turn on the motor controllers, power the motors, and power the Raspberry Pi. Ready to go. What is apple pie? An apple pie is a pie in which the principal filling ingredient is apple. What time is it? It's 5.51 p.m. Shut down. Shutting down. So the only thing we didn't test was the motors. We're gonna have to do that with uh, a little bit of weight pulling these down and hanging it up. So we'll hang it up from the ceiling first. And, and that's it. And then we did it. So we've got some eye screws affixed to the ceiling. One, two, three. And now it's all hooked up. I think it would look better white. I think it needs another coat. Yeah, that'll do. Pass me the wire cutters. Put the wire cutters away. Bring me the wire strippers. Lower the pliers. Shut down. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video.